Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna to be doing a video all about journey to your soulmate. So this is gonna be telling you how you're gonna meet your person, um, what you're gonna go through before you meet them, the journey towards actually meeting them and coming into union. So we have group number one with the clear quartz, group two with the crackle quartz, group three with the apophyllite and group four with the smoky quartz. So please choose your group now. If you want any more time, please pause the video. All the timestamps as usual are in the comment section down below and in the description box. So let's get started, starting off with group number one. Hello group number one, let's get started with your reading. So we're gonna start off with the oracle cards first and then we're gonna have a look into your crystal cards and your tarot. All right, so we've got a lot of oracle cards. Hopefully I can fit them all in the frame. <laughs> okay, so this is gonna be Jay to your soulmate, how you're gonna meet them, what you're gonna go through and things like that. So we have the scared to fly, at the right moment, sensing out the right timing. Leaf cutter and army of life. Ask for help, seek support, you are not alone. Throat chakra. Fertility, let's all take root, seed and sprout. Let new life be all about. I definitely feel like some of you guys are gonna be moving house. That's what I got from that. Planetary cycles and we also have the poet. All right, we've got so much energy here. Okay, so the first thing I'm really picking up on is <laughs> okay, this is gonna sound really dodgy, but what she's holding looks so dodgy. I just, I'm not even gonna say it, but they, it, <laughs> I don't know why I'm being drawn to that, but it looks so dodgy. Can anyone? <laughs> I don't know why, guys. I don't know why, that's why my mind is right now. Okay, so, group number one, how you're gonna meet your soulmate and what's the kind of process to meeting them? I feel like for you guys, you're definitely learning to open up your throat chakra. And I feel like for you guys, I do feel you're definitely gonna have a child with this person if that's something that you want. For those of you who don't want a child, I do feel as if you're gonna just feel, um, it sounds weird, but very fertile. Like you're gonna be ready for a new start with this person. Everything's gonna be cleared from your life, preparing you for this new uh, person. So we have the leaf cutter and army of life, ask for help, seek support, you are not alone. I do feel like the journey to your soulmate has been quite lonely or is going to be quite lonely in a sense that it's learning to find yourself. It's learning to find yourself within kind of situations that you really don't feel like you are yourself. So it's also asking you to ask for help. Like you're probably somebody who's very independent. You're somebody who doesn't really like asking for help. You're somebody who genuinely really just likes to be on your own, very independent. I feel like you'll learn to be interdependent and learn to be with somebody, but also be independent together. So basically both you're independent and then you're coming together as one single unit. This card is like really drawing me in. The fact that it's orange is kind of drawing me to the sacral chakra and the solar plexus, which is to do with feeling anxious. And I don't know if they did that on purpose because this kind of makes sense to me because when you're anxious, you are scared to fly. You are scared to do things that you're, you're scared of doing, like you're scared of reaching out and branching out. So for you guys, I do feel like you are gonna sense out the right timing as to when your next stage is. And I do feel like this relationship you're gonna have with this person is gonna be so deep. It's gonna be a lot, it's gonna be very much connected to the collective. So as the collective is waking up through this really intense process of shedding and awakening and realizing what's really going on underneath the surface in society, in a dodgy, dodgy society, I feel like you're gonna to come together to help witness this planetary change, but also to help each other through the change as well. So you're definitely meant to meet this person when things start to shift, which is about now. So I do feel as if the timing is so right with this connection, I feel like it's gonna be very divinely timed. I feel like what you're, what you're gonna learn before you meet your person is learning to ask for help because you may be somebody who's very, very um, independent and you may have a kind of an insecurity around asking for help, seeking support, that sort of thing. You may be very, very uh, internal, somebody who's very, very creative. So I do feel as if you may start poetry, you may start doing some singing or writing, drawing, doing something that's quite artistic and it could really open you up to new horizons in terms of a career, a second hobby, or a, fir one, a first hobby. Uh, it could be your person, could also be a poet. You, you may be somebody also who could be a tarot reader or somebody who's very much into like just the artistic arts or you know musical arts, things like that. 
it just feels like you um, are kind of connecting to being more confident and learning to step out on your own and being independent. And independent doesn't mean to be on your own. Independent is relying on yourself. It's understanding the trust within yourself. And you may be somebody who has quite a lot of anxiety or very shy. You may be somebody who's very insecure. I do feel like you're working on speaking your truth and speaking out. And this is something that you're going to learn before you meet your partner. So if you are still in that kind of energy, um, it may not be the right timing to meet your person. I do feel you may meet them when you have kind of changed this I kind of gained more confidence, I'm feeling. So I also feel like there's a sense of community. I do feel like you're going to meet some really lovely friends when you meet your person or before you meet your person, sorry. I feel like I feel like you're going to go for a really strong emotional change and you're going to see things very, very clearly. Like I'm seeing your vision is very clear. Your eyes are going to be <clears throat> very open, very wide open. I feel like to pull you guys a crystal card right now. So let's pull you a crystal card and let's see... What are you learning before you meet your person? Let's put that over there, actually. Okay, so we have Rainbow Myonite, Chakra Alignment, Foundation Karma. Yeah, you're definitely going for a lot of karma. This rules Leo, Virgo, Libra, Sun, and Pluto. So this says an exceptionally high vibrational crystal, Rainbow Myonite allows you to face any challenging karmic patterns and pulls out the drudgery of the past that is ingrained in the energetic body. It heals emotional traumas on every level, rebuilding the foundation for a healthy support system from the inside out. Connecting you to your spiritual team, this crystal can guide you in seeing multiple perspectives, offering many solutions. Existing in ultimate alignment with all these chakras, Rainbow Myonite helps you to step into your authentic truth. Yes, definitely. I really feel that. I feel like this is something that's quite important for you. It's important for you to step into your truth and to step out on your own. And this is also about these deep emotional traumas that have caused you to not be able to speak your truth and say how you feel. I feel like this is going to be a really lovely connection where you feel authentically like you both have a say and it's a 50-50 connection. But I do feel like you're going to feel extra fertile when you meet your person and it's maybe, maybe you've gone off the pill. Maybe you are somebody who is at the right age for, you know, having babies, you know, that sort of thing. It just feels like, or it could be that you've had a massive detox of your, your environment and your body and you may just be ready to kind of have a new energy in your life whether that be a person or whether that be just you know doing something new for yourself I feel like you're definitely um kind of going into this new energy of of this new you that you're kind of discovering so let's see what chakra is aligning for you guys the main chakra I mean we had the throat chakra but I want to pull another one wisdom and discernment I'm open to understanding the spiritual truths behind the situation occurring in my life right now. Wow, that's a really big thing. I love that. So there's definitely something that you're discovering about yourself that's new, that's fresh, that's exciting. And then you're also learning unconditional love. Love without conditions, you know, love where you can just be yourself. And I feel like it's also you, not necessarily you having unconditional love, like as in like you kind of need to give that because I feel like you're somebody who does authentically give unconditional love I feel like you're learning to receive it because what's happened in a lot of your relationships is you've been kind of drawn to this place where people have treated you really badly and you feel like a lot of your love is conditional like I know I have to be physical with this person to keep them or I have to give them gifts or I have to you know do what they want and that is not a relationship that is like imprisonment so I feel like you're going to learn to speak your truth and be your authentic self without needing to adjust or uh, uh, like you know change yourself so the main tarot card you guys got is the queen of cups authentic and virtuous so the Queen of Cups, very much like this third eye chakra. Excuse me, guys, I just burped. Sorry if you guys heard that as clarification. Um, I feel as if there's definitely something around just being your authentic self and holding that feminine energy and expressing that feminine energy very authentically and not feeling the need to kind of hold it back. Um, and this is all about having an open heart and being authentic and just being um, kind of balanced within your relationship and not adjusting yourself for anyone else. So let's have a look and see about any more tarot that wants to come out. Let's see your journey to your soulmate, what you're going to learn before you meet your person. We have justice, understanding. Oh, the emperor. Oh, I love that. That's a gorgeous energy. Let's move this over here. 
the emperor though that's 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 really stunning especially with the justice you want to meet someone who's very very attractive they're really gentle they're really easy to get on with they're somebody who's very patient they're not going to rush you i keep getting a sense of possible emotional or sexual trauma so um there may be a need to heal that as well before you come into union with this person wow we've got the empress so there's definitely a strong connection between two very mature people. So I feel like you are definitely maturing in a way where you can really understand your emotions and the other person without having any sort of like egotistical like blurt out. So obviously when you're stressed out, um, this, this happens when we kind of put our opinions on somebody else and you know, it can, it can feel uncomfortable. So what I feel like is happening is you're getting more aware of your emotions and what you wanna give and receive in a relationship and how that affects you. So we have the 10 of wands, responsibility and challenges so this is something that's kind of underneath the energy right now that you're working through you're working through many many challenges that have kind of popped up and you can see all these crystals kind of popping up underneath the sand it's like you think that sand is like really clear and crisp and then these random random things keep popping up like maybe your ex comes back or maybe you feel drawn to do something that you you know you don't really want to do like an addiction or something like that um, this is all normal guys this is a healing process you know healing isn't linear it is kind of all all around it's kind of all about so i feel like that's kind of what you're working through it's kind of what you is your emotional self and it's the need to fill up your own cup and i do feel as if with this karmic balance i feel like that's really specific and um, there's definitely a lot of karma that you are working towards and i feel like when you become much more stable than holding your own energy i feel like you're going to manifest somebody who's also very stable and can also hold their energy really well as well and i do feel like with the empress this is where you're going to find yourself you're going to find yourself first and then you're going to kind of understand this karmic energy manifest your person decide whether you want to be with them or not and then you do come into union i do see children i see marriage i see something that um, in a baby carriage sorry <laughs> it's like that rhyme um yeah it feels like you have a very strong connection with each other where you aren't judging each other for what you bring to the relationship you just see each other's soul and you're just like i really 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 want to be with you and it's not like oh you have you have this and you have that and you can give me that it's like I just love your soul and I want to be around you. You know, it's not like a conditional love. And I feel that's what you're learning definitely is to um, not be drawn to people out of conditions and being drawn to people who you feel authentically that you can be yourself with. Okay, so let's get you some dice. Let's see what else wants to come through. How are they going to meet their person? Okay, so we have Pluto, 7th house, Sagittarius. This is some really deep calm being rewritten around your relationships. You could have your Sagittarius in your 7th house. But I feel like with Pluto, Pluto rules Scorpio. It's about the underworld. So, and Sagittarius is pretty much the opposite to that, where it's very much like out there kind of, I mean, it is seeking the truth. So it is quite similar, but it's more kind of, they're able to access more of a broader perspective. Scorpio is very inward. So what I'm seeing for you guys is you are seeing things from a broader perspective. You're looking out to things and you're thinking, you know what, like I'm gonna try and expand my mind in a way that, you know, I'm not judging myself and being hard on yourself. And with Pluto, I mean, Pluto does not play around. That that planet is very, very deep and intense. So I do feel like this is, this is quite a lot of karma you're rewriting. I'm not seeing that there's any more karmas coming towards you. So I do feel like once you release and work through through this um especially to do with your relationships i feel like you are going to expand much more and have a, a relationship that is much more authentic and desirable that you you feel that you can be your authentic self with so i feel like in terms of when you're going to meet your person i wouldn't be surprised if it's within the next year like within this year that you're in right now watching this video it feels very very clear to me that there's definitely a lot of karma that you're working through and I feel like with this Sagittarius, you're learning not to judge yourself. And Sagittarius, I don't feel like are very judgmental. I feel like they can speak their truth very much, but I don't feel like they're very like, you know, judgmental. I feel like if somebody who's very open, very much like Aquarius is, they want you to be your authentic self. So it's basically saying to move away from the negative patterns of overthinking and looking at yourself in a bad way and just focusing on the authentic side of you you know the side of you that is bringing the beautiful energy to this world not the not the the part of you that needs to manipulate and force and push like this is authentic so that's what i feel like you're learning guys definitely speaking your truth and you may have counseling or speech therapy or something like that where you can really get stuff out before you meet your person i feel like there's a massive 
Like I'm actually, this is so random, but I'm actually hearing a toilet flushing, like in my in my intuition. And it's kind of like you're flushing away all the crap <laughs> that you no longer need. So thank you so much for watching guys. If you'd like a private reading, all my information's down below. Thank you so much for being here. My crystal shop is also down below as well if you want to check that out. I hope you have a lovely day and I'll speak to you soon. Oh, also the last thing I want to say is you guys are kind of embodying Venus and embodying that very much feminine energy where you can just nurture without uh, conditions. It's very, very beautiful. Really just authentically being this feminine energy. And you don't have to be a, a, a female or a masculine to have feminine and masculine energy. Everyone has feminine and masculine energies. Otherwise we'd be in complete, well, we are in a bit of chaos right now, but that's be, that's because we are ascending. Uh, it's not, it's not a uh, clean process ascending. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a lovely day and I'll speak to you soon. Bye. Hello, group number two. Thank you so much for being here. Let's see what your journey to your soulmate is. We're going to start with the oracle cards and then we're going to do the tarot in a moment. So let's have a look at your oracle cards first. Hopefully I have enough room on this table. You guys chose the crackle quartz. I just want to show you guys this crystal. It's just so stunning. Look how beautiful that is. Hopefully that is focused on some level. <laughs> All right. So let's get started with your reading. Let's see how you're going to meet your soulmate. So stolen in her sleep, unaware, unconscious, unawakened. So this is going to be the journey to your soulmate. This is going to be what you need to learn, what you need to know before you meet your partner. And this is going to prepare you for, for meeting them. You know, it's going to prepare you for getting ready for this relationship and possibly what you need to work on before you kind of meet. It give you an idea of that. Oh, I love this. So I'm going to have a look at these cards in just a moment. I can't fit them in the frame. So we'll do that in just a second. Okay, so I really love this energy. I'm getting really strong Taurus from this group. So if you guys are a Taurus, um, I'm really picking up on that. Just like really authentic love. So I love this. You guys have got some really positive cards. I mean, you've got love abounds, abundance, beginnings. These are like really positive forward movement. So this is really lovely. For you guys, I feel as if you have been feeling very, very down recently. Um, you've been feeling like things just aren't working out for you and you're just like, ugh, can't be asked anymore. You know, universe, what are you doing, girl? Like, you're messing me around, bro. <laughs> uh, I feel like you have had a little chat with the universe recently and I feel like you're definitely working on um, ego that's coming up. This card looks scarier than what it is. I feel like it's very dramatic, but I do feel as if there may be parts of you that are coming up in your in your nightmares or in your dreams where it's just kind of allowing you to work for your, your subconscious. I feel it's definitely a part of you that wants to be released. Um, and I do feel as if there's a part of you that's definitely awakening. And I do feel as if you're starting to feel really kind of confused about the world because possibly you didn't really have uh, this awareness of, of the society and all the corruption that's gone on. And I feel like this is really awakening you. And this is this is a process towards your soulmate. You know, you're going to meet somebody who's also going through a really similar process to this. I'm actually hearing your soulmate has gone to a psychic. So that's really interesting. I don't really get that that message. I'm seeing this person going into like, I mean, a really typical like psychic. I'm seeing like one of those little fortune teller tents. And I'm seeing them going in there with like and this woman with like a crystal ball. I, it's just, it's so cute. So I see you doing that or them doing that. And you, you may even meet through your psychic that you meet you know you may even meet through a fortune teller or a psychic or you know whatever you want to call them pretty much the same thing but it's you know it's on different levels so I feel like you may be connecting with crystals quite um, intensely in the last few months you may be discovering crystals that have really been helping you and assisting you especially if you are very sensitive you are going to pick up on the energies of crystals um, not everyone can and that's okay it comes with a it comes with timing and it also comes with opening your heart chakra that allows you to um, really speak your truth and help you to really uh, connect with crystals and nature and things like that. I feel like just the more you, your heart chakra opens, the more uh, you can allow nature and things to come in. And obviously, if you've worked a nine to five job, if you've been through education that's really put you down, I feel like you're definitely working on bringing yourself back up again. And if you are still in education, I do feel like you're not going to be in education when you meet your person. I don't feel like it's going to be a school or college. I think it's going to be like after that. So if you guys are currently a teenager, I do feel like it's going to be more in your later 20s when you meet this person. Um, obviously, that's not going to be for everyone. But those of you specifically who are teenagers, I don't see you being in college or uni when you meet your person. I feel like it's going to be after that. Because I feel like there's too much constriction around you for you to meet somebody 
where you can be fully authentic. And if you're somebody who doesn't really get interrupted by other people's energies, then I do feel like, yes, you may meet them in uh, university. It feels like somebody, uh, it feels like you're someone who's very sensitive. So if you kind of connect with other people's energies and you suck them up like a sponge, then obviously it's just being careful with your energy and who you uh, are around. So I love this love abounds. We have number one and number two. So obviously that makes so much sense because number two is duality, it's relationships. So love abounds, I'm pretty sure here is the Ace of Cups or you know something similar. So this is all about this new start and this reminds me of the fall as well. So it has divine service, how can you serve yourself better? And the horse, free spirit, give yourself the space and freedom to express your creativity. Both of these are extremely important. Dogs are really loyal and horses are just, when you get, if you're a horse person, if you absolutely love horses, people who take care of horses are normally pretty obsessed with them because you have to be, you know, if you wanna look after an animal that frequently, you have to love it fully. That's what I feel like is this relationship. And it's not an obsession, it's more like, um, just an authentic love like you care for them so much that there isn't anything that you wouldn't do for them you know and I feel like that's the connection you're coming into and it's just so lovely very Aquarian energy it's just a really strong Aquarius relationship and I'm not talking about your sun sign or rising or anything like that I mean obviously if you are that's extra clarification but I'm talking about the Aquarius age and just this authentic clear love and since we've gone more into the Aquarian age because I've done readings for about two years now, I'm sensing that the difference between the Capricorn age and the Aquarian age, girl, these relationships are completely different. Like Aquarian age relationships are so authentic. They're so spiritual, they're so much lighter and they don't come with so much baggage or karma. They come with more of, we need to help the world expand and helping the universe to expand. So you're definitely gonna be starting a new beginning. When you meet your person, you are gonna be somebody who is, you're gonna be somebody new. You're gonna be brand new, you're gonna be, this new reborn person. So most likely you will may you may go through a dark night of the soul. I'm actually hearing black death, which maybe you're researching on that for like a school project. I don't know, but there's something there. And it's nothing to be scared of. I don't mean to scare any of you guys. This is to do with um, your soul. Um, the old parts of your soul that are no longer needed are kind of like rele releasing and excreting. And then the new parts of you, the authentic, the clear, the, the visionary, that's all coming in, okay? It's the, the death of the old and the ego. And obviously we still we still have your ego there, but I feel like obviously because that's how it makes us human is having the ego, um, but because it protects us. But I do feel like you're not being controlled by it. You're just doing what feels authentic to you. So we have the free spirit. Give yourself give yourself the space and freedom to express your creativity. This is showing me that you guys may start a business. You may do a project that just you feel like you can really express yourself. Um, this may also be, I'm actually seeing you um, being in a family business. So if you are very passionate about this family business, I see that happening. I just see you just being free and allowing yourself to just be yourself. So say if you have this really big dream or goal that you've always wanted to do and express, I feel like you're gonna find that and then you find your soulmate and you're gonna meet together. But I just feel like you're gonna be this brand new person that you, you haven't even met yet, which is so beautiful. And I do feel like with the dog, it says, how can you serve yourself better? So you're learning to work with these parts of you that you don't really like very much, but the more you love them, the more they're not anything to be afraid of anymore. You know, they're, they're, brand, they're brand new and they're something amazing. And I feel like something that really helped me with um, anxiety and things like that was learn to trust myself. So I feel like um, what really helped me was putting my hands on my heart and, and repeating to myself, I trust myself, I trust myself, I trust myself. And even if you don't trust yourself, um, it, it's actually a really amazing technique and also writing three things every day that you love about yourself or that you've done, that you've accomplished. So say if you're somebody who's gone through depression, a really hard time, something that is really good is either, if you're somebody quite practical, setting goals every day that are really easy to set. So you're not too kind of upset if you can't make them or do them. Or if you're somebody who's quite emotional, uh, uh, kind, of, kind of internal, I feel like for you guys, it'll be really nice for you to do like three things a day, like write these things down every night or morning, whenever you are, you know, whenever the, wherever the habit is easier to do. Um, and kind of writing down every single day the things that you know you are, have accomplished in that day or things you're really proud of yourself you know whatever you feel drawn to do whatever your kind of your brain kind of goes more towards because you want to do things that's, that's easy that's not too hard for you okay wow oh my god I love this 
Ooh, okay, so as you can see, you've got the dark part of you and then you've got the lighter part. This is, everyone's got this, negative and positive. This is something you're really working on. You're releasing the mask. You're releasing the need to please, to force, to push. And the bridge is you meeting your soulmate. So this is the new version of you that you're creating to meet your partner. And then we have the seed. So this is a brand new you. This is a brand new part of you that's being awakened, that is coming into fruition. And the seed is a brand new you. Okay, I love this. This is so cute. And I love how we had the black and the colourful and then the black and the colourful. I love that. That's just so beautiful. And I feel like even in the darker times that we feel, it doesn't mean that we're not getting anywhere or not doing anything. We don't always have to be doing things to be healing, to be releasing, to help ourselves, you know. I feel like it's definitely a part of you that you're releasing the mask of, you're releasing the need to, I feel like you're releasing the need to please yourself. And it's not a sense that of self-love, this feels more like judging yourself and having to be like perfect on the ball all the time. Maybe you had parents that were very much like, you have to get good grades, you have to look good, you have to not be, not be a certain weight or anything like that, kind of very toxic traits. Obviously that, obviously I'm not judging, but you know, people do the best they can, but these are quite, egotistical judgmental traits you know if they're putting that on you that can really affect your self-esteem so I feel like you're learning to just be yourself you're learning to expand and this seed is gorgeous like this reminds me of a pearl and pearls are very rare so I feel like this is something that is meant to happen because I don't feel like you're going to meet your soulmate otherwise because this is this is literally this part of your soul's path this is literally what's been written before you came onto this earth I feel and I just I love these cards I just love rainbows I'm obsessed <laughs> I just love them. I love these cards. They're amazing. Okay. I'm such a rainbow gal. I love it. I love rainbows. All right. Let's get your tarot. Ooh, the two of rings. Fluctuation, adaptability. I'm pretty sure this is the two of pentacles, but I'm actually seeing it as like an engagement or like a wedding. I love this. Yay. Uh, fluctuation, adaptability. This is basically what you're learning. You'll learn to be adaptable. You learn to adapt to situations and not and flow with it and not be so... Um, controlled like needing to control everything and needing to fixate on things that possibly just aren't aren't good for you you know so oops let's get a couple more we have collaboration and competence three of rings we then have the dawn of rings which is reflection and diligence new directions walking away that that one's very powerful that's a really powerful card let's get one more Oops. Ace of Swords. Breakthrough and mental focus. Exactly. I love that. That's gorgeous. Then we have Temperance. Moderation and equilibrium. This is also about patience. Being patient with yourself. Trust in divine timing. Filling up your own cup. And then it fills up others' cups too. Okay. So we have Two of Rings, Three of Rings, Dawn of Rings, Eight of Cups, Ace of Swords. So I feel as if you're coming into union with yourself. You're then finding this new um, pathway. Sorry, guys, my camera keeps defocusing. Sometimes it's spirits. Um, sometimes it happens with technology. Uh, it's also coming into Mercury retrograde, which isn't helpful. Um, and then we have the Dawn of Rings reflection and diligence. So it's almost like you found yourself. You found something you're really passionate about. You're doing it. You're expressing it. You're creating it. You're then reflecting on your progress and keep keep doing the same thing over and over again, as in like exploring yourself and exploring this new path. Then you're coming into a new direction because you are now found yourself. You now found this new part of you. You're coming much more whole. You're then walking away from anything that no longer serves you. You're allowing yourself to release that. And then you have this breakthrough. And this is what you're learning before you meet your person. You're, you're learning to focus on your mental energy and, and know that's really, really important. And that's as important as your physical body. Okay, really, really beautiful. And you're going to meet someone who's very clear spoken. They may have a, a strong accent, like a British accent, or I'm just hearing quite a posh accent. And when I say British, not all British accents are pretty. Let's just say that. <laughs> uh, so I feel like you may be meeting somebody who's quite posh, quite posh. Okay, yeah, definitely expressing my feelings. That is this, definitely. Oh, I love this. Personal power. I choose to be myself and express my truth. I love this. I have a positive influence on the people and the situations around me. I'm actually seeing for you guys, obviously not, this isn't going to resonate with everyone, but I'm seeing you meeting somebody at something like, um, like a ball or um, give me the word please, like 
I don't know what it's called. What is it called? There's an event in London that's every Christmas time they have it. Uh, I can't remember what it's called, but I feel like you're going to meet somebody at, at an event um, or something like that. Obviously, that's when we can kind of come together more. Um, yeah, I feel like that's one of the things you or might be something you're going to be doing with them. Um, yeah, I'm hearing the Jingle Bell Ball, which is something we have, which is, um, I think it's by Capital FM. It's like a big concert that's, that's done. So I feel like something like that is like something you really like. I feel like you're somebody who likes to explore and be around new people and explore new places, things like that. So throat chakra, expressing my feelings. I allow my emotions to be fully experienced. I acknowledge feelings of grief, anger, or fear, and I make a conscious effort to express my emotions or resolve them within myself so I can move forward freely. I let the unconditional love experienced in my heart be expressed through my voice and my creativity. Exactly, that's exactly what I was feeling. So how are you gonna meet your soulmate? We have Gemini, Sun, third house. I mean, that is that matches up perfectly. So literally, coming into your authentic power with your voice, you may um, make a podcast, you may do like a group project where you have to speak your truth, then it allows, it allows something to change within you and then you, that's how you meet them because your vibration has changed. It's something to do with speech and really just opening yourself up and it could be you meet them on social media as well because the third house is to do with social media. Um, yeah, absolutely beautiful. So thank you so much for watching, guys. If you'd like a private reading or you want to check out my crystal shop, please do. Thank you so much for being here. I hope you have a lovely day and I'll speak to you very soon. Bye. Hello, group number three. Thank you so much for being here. Let's get started with your reading. Let's see how you're going to meet your soulmate, journey to your soulmate, what you're going to go through, all those things. Let's see what the universe is preparing you for, girl. So you guys chose a buff, a Bophilite? No. <laughs> Apophilite. Ugh, oh, Mercury retrograde. I don't like you. Apophilite is very beautiful, really stunning. It's got a, such a high vibration. So that's what I definitely feel like this relationship is. Very high vibrational. We're gonna have a look at the tarot in just a moment. Okay, let's see how many oracle cards I can fit in the frame. <laughs> I picked so many oracle cards this time around. All right, so we have the Merlin, guidance, mentorship, teacher of the old ways. I love him. Isn't he a cutie? He looks so cute. Okay. And then we have Eagle, Ancestral Healing. Your ancestors are holding space for you to heal your past. Seek the Truth, number seven. Wisdom, very nice. I'm seeing a bit of a pattern here. <laughs> Wisdom, oh my God, these owls are so funny. <laughs> I don't normally get this card. Okay, I love that. We have number seven twice and we have 33 here. That is so beautiful. And number six, letting go, allow the wisdom to remain, but the sting I shall never feel again. On a Wednesday with a waxing moon, let wisdom come and be renewed. Some of you guys may have the name Wednesday. I know some people are called um, days of the, the week, so that's quite interesting. Hanael, willpower, and then we also have Hanael again, hope. Woo, damn girl, you got a lot, you got a lot of cards. We also have these two here. Um, I'll look at those in just a moment. Actually, I think there's three cards here, okay. The universe was like, hi, let me give you all the messages <laughs> that you can't fit in the frame. All right, so first of all, Merlin the Eagle, seek the truth, wisdom, hope. This is all about seeing things from a broader perspective and being this person who has a lot of wisdom. So you are gonna be somebody, you're coming into this like breaking point, this opening, this releasing, this drawing away like can you see how she's like opening up this new path for herself like she's paving the way so that's what I feel like you guys are going through you are paving the way for yourself and the ego is ancestral healing your ancestors are holding space for you to heal your past and then we also have letting go and seeking the truth so you are definitely going very very deep into your subconscious I wouldn't be surprised if you are doing shadow work if you're having reiki if you are doing ancestral kind of healing if you are doing past life regression shamanic work all of those things is such a deep energy I feel like it's such a big intense raw breakthrough that you guys are going through and I feel like you're not going to be able to find what this is until you fully fully basically just surrender to it and allow yourself to go into it this this is a healing wisdom that's coming up for you so you can have more hope for the future and we have this gorgeous red crystal this could be representative of ruby this could be red jasper this feels very much like your your inner power your solar plexus your root chakra 
all of those energies of just ultimate power. So I do feel as if you are you have gone through such an intense time recently. Serious spiritual growth, serious spiritual awakening. We have the number seven twice. I mean, that's if that's not a sign, I don't know what is. You have the number 33, so that could be your life path number. Number seven could be your life path number. It just feels like Sorry guys, just hit the microphone. Number seven is about spirituality from, from what I kind of draw it to. So for you guys, you are somebody who is definitely a mentor. You are really helpful to others. You, ha you have this gorgeous healing energy and you are somebody who will give until you are burnt out and you are definitely learning to draw your energy back. You are withdrawing. You are being aware of how much you are giving and how much you are taking, how much you're receiving. These are sort of things that you're learning. You're essentially learning how to be in a relationship. And obviously, obviously you'll be like, oh, I know how to be in a relationship, but this is actually the most strongest relationship you will ever have and probably are going to have in your life. This is somebody who you'll be committed for the rest of your life. This is somebody who you will be together until it's not all right, it's, until it's not okay for your soul anymore, until you need to move on basically. So with the ancestral healing, eagles are a very strong symbol. Maybe look up the um, symbol of the eagle or the owl. I mean, the owls are very wise, but I feel like eagles are very wise too, but in a more kind of eccentric way. Eagles pave the way for, you know, people who are in tribes. They're a sign of hope. They're a sign of spirit. So I feel like you guys are going to get lots of signs to when you meet your soulmates. You guys are literally going through such a deep healing. I, I genuinely am sending my love to you guys because this is not easy stuff. This is some really deep stuff. And the Merlin, I mean, teacher of the old ways, mentorship guidance, most likely you're an old soul or a star seed that has so much wisdom and you're like, I have no idea where my wisdom comes from. It just is there. So I feel like that's kind of what you're learning to hold on to. You're learning to know that you are such a beautiful human being. You know, having all this wisdom is a blessing and it might feel like a curse sometimes. Possibly if you're very empathic, you're very sensitive, you pick up on things that other people don't. Girl, this is such intense energy. I wouldn't be surprised if you guys are Sag, Scorpio, Aquarius, Pisces, all those very, very strong psychic um, zodiac signs. Obviously, every zodiac sign is psychic. I mean, Cancerian included too. Just, it just is wow. It's like, holy crap. Um, this is like some really deep stuff. And the hope is basically saying that I know things have been really hard recently. You are going to meet your soulmate. It just takes this really like literally going to the absolute depths of your soul. Like this isn't, this isn't even funny. You know, this is like such intense stuff that maybe you have even never even found this before because with the, um, with the earth awakening, you are awakening with it. And you may be somebody who's very connected to Gaia. You may be uh, working on your heart chakra, really connecting to uh, another soul. You may, I feel like you may meet another soul before you meet your person, like a mentor, like a teacher, like, um, like a, I feel like somebody who's the opposite sex to you. So whether you're a male or a female or whatever gender you kind of associate with, it's kind of like the opposite to that. So obviously we all have masculine and feminine energies, but this person has a very strong energy that you don't really possess yet. So say if you're working and you're, you're feeling much more masculine, this person will be very feminine. And that's who you're gonna attract before you meet your soulmate because they're gonna help you to embrace both sides of you, not just the masculine, not just the feminine, not the assertive, the overbearing, controlling, addictive energy, or the passive, too sensitive, um, possibly, you know, yeah, that sort of energy. I feel like you'll learn to balance out and bring in the positive aspects of both masculine and feminine, whether it be the caring, the nurturing, and the assertive, the in, the in control, you know, those sort of things. I feel like, wow, <laughs> this is like such big energy, holy crap. So if you guys are going through this, I put my heart out to you because this is not easy. And you guys may be very drawn to kind of like Merlin recently or, very strong teachers. So you may have gone more into Christianity or more into talking to God, talking to Jesus, you know, wherever you feel drawn to. I feel like you're definitely drawn to another soul on some level or another being or deity. It may even be an archangel that you're very drawn to at the moment who've been helping you with this releasing process. I'm seeing you guys at like the doctors and you're being examined. So I feel like for some of you guys, this is kind of what's going on on a spiritual level for you guys. You are literally being um, not experimented on, that's the wrong word, operated on to, to kind of be um, upgraded. So obviously don't be scared of that guys. It might even be like an intergalactic energy that a lot of us are going through. Um, but this feels 
Wow. Oh my God. Oh my God. This is so funny because these are cards that are frequently coming out in my readings. That whenever I use these, these two are very frequent. So because you guys have that, that's a really strong sign that you are meant to meet your soulmate very soon. Like it, it's showing me that this is so meant to be. And the hope energy and the willpower is saying like having the hope to keep going like you are not alone everything is divinely timed for you you may feel like ugh, when is my soulmate coming they are preparing you the universe your guides your higher self is preparing you for this new soulmate you have to release this old abandonment energy to come into your power to embrace yourself and you may have been somebody who was neglected as a child you may have had abusive parents you may have had um, family who was just really horrible to you or you just felt alone you felt like the black sheep of the family the bad the person who's on your own by the way the black sheep is the best one <laughs> um, and you just felt like you couldn't find yourself because there was no one to support you and my heart honestly goes out for you guys because you have done the work okay you are shedding your old skin this child here is your inner child you are learning to speak to your inner child focus on your inner child and meet your man or your woman in that in that space in that space of wholeheartedness unconditional love you are not meant to be with somebody that's karmic no one is the karmic energy is just to help us learn the person we're meant to be with is a kindred spirit it depends on where it just depends on what our soul needs to learn and how we're going to get there this is not easy stuff. This is very Scorpionic energy. So if you guys are Scorpio, I feel like this is very Scorpionic. The self is all about finding yourself, seeing different aspects of you and cultivating it, drawing it in, using it, and not just thinking, oh, you know, they're better than me. I'm never going to get there. Completely reversing it, flipping it on its side, 360, and saying, I can achieve that. I can do that. This is showing me what I can do. This is showing me the potential of what I'm allowed, what I can allow myself to do. The empty room is one of my absolute favorite. Actually, these two are my favorite cards. The empty room is one of my absolute favorites. I just freaking love it. I love it so much because it basically says you have so much potential and you don't even know what's coming towards you. Like this is going to be astounding. This is going to be absolutely amazing. Those of you who chose group number three, yes, queen. <laughs> I love this group. Um, the empty room is like so amazing and you're going to meet so many different souls on this new journey but you have to be in the waiting room this is such a this is such a like a collective energy right now everyone is in the waiting room we're waiting for something we don't even know what we're waiting for but we are waiting for it because the manipulation is coming out of the woodwork we can't can't we can't keep going the way we're going anymore so this is beautiful. So sometimes a waiting room, a doctor's or a dentist, ugh, they're so annoying. You know, you never know when you're going to be seen. Sometimes they take ages. Sometimes they take too long and then you get more and more impatient. That's essentially what you're going through right now. And you don't know what's on the other side. Maybe, you know, it's going to, they're going to give you good news. They're going to give you news that's, you know, a bit confusing. Something like that. It's like, you don't know what's on the other side, but girl, it is amazing because just because you don't know what it is, doesn't mean it's bad. Okay. It is good stuff. This is good stuff. This reminds me of Lilo and Stitch for some reason. So if any of you guys really like Lilo and Stitch, picking up on that really strongly. All right, Tarot. Eight of Wands, alignment and progress. You are on the right freaking path, girl. You are doing the work. You are doing the work. You're going to meet some souls really a lot like you, like a lot like you. You're going to meet people who are literally identical to you. Okay. I'm going to get a song. Hang on. I'm hearing Let Me Entertain You. I don't know what the actual title of this song is called. Okay. I'm hearing Starlight, the song Starlight, where it's like Starlight, na, 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 that one. And Robin Williams, um, Entertain You, something like that. I have no idea what these songs mean, but that's what they're saying. I'm also hearing Robin Williams, Angels as well. Curiosity and discovery. You are discovering yourself. This is this is a time to discover who you are. This is a time to discover your new you. Development opportunity. Exactly. Developing this new version of you. Five of cups. Dwelling in avoidance. Three of cups. Compassion and happiness. This is like completely opposite energies. I feel like you definitely have to go through the loneliness and the sadness to get to where you need to be because it's essentially releasing all of that old karma and you are not your past you are not your trauma you are you okay before you came to this earth you had you had this soul that was so loving and so 
authentic and that's who you are at the core of all of this and that's who you're going to find again and then you're going to meet your soulmate which is going to be even more amazing because you're going to be so much easier allowing your love to come in and flow to you without any judgment of yourself without any restrictions and yeah of course we're going to have baggage but it doesn't mean that you're not going to allow this new love to come in spirit of wands enthusiastic adventurous that's your person your person is enthusiastic and adventurous this is a page of wands. This is you on your little on your little pathway. This is your little soul on your pathway, ready to meet your soulmate. And this is like your new little temple. <laughs> okay, that's beautiful. I love that. We have inspiration and potential. Dawn of wands. I love that. That's beautiful. Just reconnecting with yourself. I love all these crystals on these cards. It just makes me so happy. Then we have the Queen of Wands, generosity and tenacity, finding your authentic self, finding what lights you up and makes you passionate in this world. The Three of Cups makes me very happy. I feel like you're gonna you're gonna actually have a celebration. Maybe it'd be like a little celebration for yourself. Maybe buying some yourself some nice food, having a nice drink, watching something you really love, and just binging out and just being like, yeah, I freaking did that. I freaking went through it, and I, I, I and I'm really proud of myself. And you're gonna meet other people who are on your wavelength. Most likely you're gonna meet your partner through another friend, I feel, for a lot of you guys. Let's see what chakra you guys are working on currently. I'm just hearing pulling at my heartstrings. You may be watching something that's pulling at your heartstrings and you may feel, might feel quite emotional at the moment, but I do feel like this is opening your heart chakra. So if you guys have been feeling very angry or overly emotional, um, I just feel like it's something that you're working through. And obviously, when I say overly emotional, there is nothing wrong with expressing your emotions. I'm talking like crying just randomly at something that isn't even sad, like, a, I don't know, like a like a pill commercial or something like that. And then we have the connect with spirit. I develop a quiet mind that allows me to tune in and get in touch with my higher self or my spirit. I listen for the guidance that is there waiting for me to hear. Beautiful. And then we have the solar plexus, self-confidence. I trust myself fully. Were you the group that I said I trust myself to? I said, put your hands in your heart and repeat to yourself, I trust myself, I trust myself, I trust myself. I don't know if that was you guys or group number two, but that is like really accurate. So I trust myself fully. I will not allow fear or doubt to hold me back from doing what I'm here to do. I have confidence, belief and conviction in my abilities and goals. I welcome questioning by others as this gives me a chance to clarify my truth, ideas and philosophies. I trust in a higher power and I'm open to new challenges. Yes, queen, get it. All right, let's see how you're gonna meet your person. We have Sag, second house, uh, Jupiter. You're gonna meet your person through your career and through meeting new people. So it's gonna be most likely people from abroad, people from a different country, foreign, like foreign lands, foreign countries, um, not your country, maybe be not, maybe be a different state, something like that. And um, the second house is also to do with income, your daily routines. So you want to most likely be moving house before you meet your person or you may be going on some sort of trip before you meet them. It feels like a, it is not a, like a physical moving, like you're not literally physically moving your body. I feel like this internal journey is going to be enough to shift your shift you into your relationship going forward. And Jupiter is about expansion. So your work is going to expand and then you're going to possibly do things worldwide. That's going to connect you to more people, therefore going to connect you to your partner. Beautiful. I'm also hearing UK to USA, like a connection between those two. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. If you'd like a private reading or you want to check out my crystal shop, all that information is down below. I love you guys so much. I hope you have a lovely day and I'll speak to you soon. Bye. Hello, group number four. Thank you so much for being here. Let's get started with your reading. You guys chose the beautiful smoky quartz. I mean, how freaking stunning is that? I am obsessed. A smoky quartz is so lovely. It's such a lovely energy, very grounding, but very purifying. Just, oh, Yes, queen. So we're gonna have a look at the tarot in just a moment. We're gonna have a look at the oracle cards first. Hopefully I can fit them in the frame. If not, we'll just have to do it piece by piece. I feel like that's what you guys are saying to yourself as well, like doing things slowly, one step at a time, that sort of thing. Okay, how you're gonna meet your person and your journey to your soulmate. Fairy lovers, new love, courtships, romance, falling in love. You guys are the only group who got this card. Congratulations. <laughs> All right, we then have Child of the Moon, Forgiveness, Transcending the Ego. Yas, Queen, look at her. She's fully in her power right there. Okay. Kundalini Rising, channel your creative passion and sensuality. Welcome to the transformation. Sorry if you guys can see my ring light. I do apologize for that. Releasing, strengthening bonds. 
We then have safe home and we also have beauty. So we're gonna have a look at the other cards in just a moment. Okay, so, whoo, lots of new energy coming in for you guys. You guys definitely are gonna meet someone new very soon. This, is, this person's gonna be like your, literally like ultimate soulmate. They're gonna be really similar to you but they're gonna have really lovely traits. Um, we also have forgiveness and transcending the ego. So you're most likely gonna be releasing just really old parts of you that are just no longer, no longer yours. And I feel like with strengthening bonds, you're gonna be connecting to people who are much more on your wavelength. Like you're gonna be realizing who is for you, who is not for you, and you're gonna to start to feel much more safe. So I feel like you're working on safety. We have the number 13, number one, number four, and 39. So these could be numbers that are really close to your heart. We have 36 and 46, so definitely um, advancing. I'm actually seeing some of you guys going camping, like in a caravan or a tent or something like that. So I don't know if that's something you guys are doing, but I definitely see that. Um, we then have beauty and safe home. Like this is you guys kind of acknowledging your inner beauty, acknowledging your your beautiful self. And I actually saw like a sparkle a little bit on this car, which is so cute. So I definitely feel like, I mean, it has sparkles on it, but I just saw it as really cool. So that's definitely spirit or an orb or something. Um, I feel like you guys are definitely releasing the need to pause, pause, nope, to push and force your relationships. So you don't have to be around anyone who isn't giving you 100%. You know, you wanna be around people who give exactly how you give, you know, your, it's, it's an equal relationship. It needs to be one-on-one. -on -one. So I feel like the person you're gonna be with is gonna be somebody who is really strong-minded. They're very touch, touchy-feely, they're very tactile. And you're gonna meet them through releasing any ego to ego energy that you have. And this is things like judging yourself, um, forcing connections, feeling the need to be with people out of fear things like that that's what you're releasing and the more you connect to your creativity and your sensuality the more you're going to connect to this person quicker and more healthier okay so we also then also have strengthening bonds this is really beautiful strengthening bonds is all about you um becoming much more able to open your heart to people who are on your wavelength so this is finding people who are of your nature, people who really suit you, people who are for you. And then we also have safe home. I cast this circle roundabout. Safety now is beyond doubt. I feel like you guys have felt very unsafe in your energy, feeling very insecure about yourself or unsafe in your home. I feel like you're gonna learn to put your boundaries up set strong intentions for yourself. I see you guys doing new affirmations. So if you guys are somebody who loves doing affirmations, I see that that's something that you guys are gonna be doing. And the beauty, it says, I have a form, excuse me, I have a form which is divine, I allow that is within to shine. And I feel like some of you guys may be scared of expressing yourself, especially if you are a female or a feminine. I feel like you're scared of expressing yourself because you feel like, oh, maybe I'll be sexualized. Maybe people will like, you know, cat call me or something or it's something like that I feel like maybe you've had a bit of trauma with kind of expressing yourself authentically even if it's showing parts of your body or kind of open yourself up sexually that may be something that you're really working on and you're releasing the need to kind of judge yourself because being a sexual person we're all sexual in one way you know we we were born through it you know we are born out of a beautiful connection between two people and that is so natural and it's being put down on us so much with this stupid society, the negative parts of it anyway, where we've been told that that's not good enough, we're not allowed to talk about it, taboo, you know, or it's private or it's secret. And at the end of the day, it's actually something that we should all be talking about. And maybe not over the dinner table or, or, or to like your grandma or something, but this is something, I mean, I mean, I don't know you guys, if you want to talk about it to your grandma, freaking go for it. But I feel like this is, you're right granny, you know. <laughs> oh my god what is wrong with me um okay i feel like you guys are just allowing yourself to express yourself authentically and i feel like as i was laughing i was like do you know what i feel like you guys need a good laugh i thought you guys need to watch something funny a way to watch something that's very much um igniting your inner child i love that this is so funny <laughs> i love it i just feel like taking things light-hearted like not everything is serious and sometimes we really do take things seriously because we have that ego we have that human part of us it's like serious you know it has to be all, all or nothing you know and it's not always like that so we have abundance we then have um the sword and the father definitely learning to um work with your relationship with your father learn to um, accept your relationship with your masculine energy and cutting off people that no longer serve you speaking your truth 
um, being in your power, basically acknowledging what your needs are and having and allowing them to have be met. And then with the father, this is embracing both sides of you, the kind of like the curious, but also the unhinged, you know, like parts of you where you feel like you just want to express and have fun. And I feel like you're definitely going to meet your person through abundance. Like things, you're going to start to feel much more abundant when you meet your person. And I do feel um, it's really important for you guys to look out for yin yang signs, like black and white um, contrasting colors. I feel like some of you guys I'm seeing like art deco and things. So that might be a sign that you may be meeting your person. You might be like unconsciously decorating your house in art deco and then you'll be like, oh, oh yeah, I forgot that was a sign, you know? It feels like you're gonna bring much more color into your life, um, whether that be with your what you're wearing, makeup, it could be um, your your house, making it more colorful. It could be the way you express yourself is more colorful. Just like maybe you never swore, you felt like it was taboo and now you're just like fuck, 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 <laughs> like everywhere. Just, you know, just expressing yourself and not being judgmental on anything that you feel the need to do. Because if this is authentic to you, that is absolutely natural. There is nothing wrong with that. Authenticity is where you need to be. If you have a drawn, like a natural draw to something that feels safe, that feels good for you, that feels authentic, go towards it. You know, if you are safe doing that, go for it. Because at the end of the day, if you're not expressing yourself, then what are you doing? You know, it's kind of like you're here to be authentic. You're here to express your individuality. Why would you want to be like anyone else? And why also would you want to listen to other people's opinions if they're negative? You know, obviously we have can have self, we can, we can have, um, criti we can have criticizing and things like that. We can have like, you know, helpful advice, but at the end of the day, you you know what's good for you. You know what your path is and what's meant to be. Main energy, the hermit. That makes so much sense. You guys are going to go inwards before you meet your person. A lot of contemplation and soul searching before you meet them. You're going to be really realizing how to assert yourself. And that sensual energy is so, so, so important. It's not just about sex. This is creativity. This is self-expression. This is being able to be confident in who you are and what feels natural for you. And also, this is also about intimacy. This is being... Um, connecting to somebody where you can be yourself, where you can be vulnerable with somebody. That is intimacy. That's that's your sensual energy. And that's so, so, so important to work on that, okay? It's also understanding what makes you feel sensual, what, what makes you feel really good about yourself, what makes you want to put on some really nice, you know, clothing and feel good about yourself. So things like that, you know? I feel like just self-expression through your body is really important, whether it's dancing, whether it's a clothing situation, something like that. King of Rings, that's the King of Pentacles. Insecurity, recovery, five of, five of Pentacles. Uh, King of Pentacles, responsibility and abundance. Four of Swords, Ace of Swords, sorry, Ace of Wands. Solitude, healing, ambition and willpower. So there's definitely a lot of like um, kind of judgment on yourself, feeling like you're not doing enough, feeling like you can't get anywhere, feeling like you have to have your life sorted. Girl, you do not have to have anything sorted, okay? We, we, all, we all don't know what we're doing. We're all just making it up. We don't come to life. We don't come into... In, through we don't we don't get birthed with a manual you know we're not an ikea we're not a piece of ikea furniture and sometimes ikea furniture can be really confusing you know sometimes some parts are missing sometimes like a piece is ripped out from the tutorial you know it's not always helpful girl when you want to make a wardrobe that isn't what your life feels like at the moment oh my god that analogy is so funny my guys are so sassy a lot of you guys are fire signs so we have the ten of cups abundance and attainment you guys actually had the card of abundance this is where you are going. Okay, so right now it feels kind of daunting. You are definitely going towards this unknown place that feels very kind of confusing for you, very scary. This isn't scary, this is just a new phase. It's kind of like when you go into like a new year in school and you never know what it's gonna bring, that kind of energy. It's like excitement, but also feeling a little bit nervous. So that's basically what you're gonna go through with your person. I feel like this is what you're gonna go, sorry, what you're gonna go through before you meet your person. You're learning to be responsible for yourself. You're working through your insecurities. You're recovering from anything that has ba has abandoned you, has um, brought you inse feeling insecure. You're then gonna go through a massive hermit energy and you're gonna go through some solitude healing. Look how beautiful this is. This with this um, lovely kind of outline here. That's your soul being rewritten. You're then gonna feel much more powerful. You're gonna find yourself. You're gonna find what you feel really passionate about. You're gonna find yourself through this solitude and doing things by yourself is never a bad thing. And also if you guys feel the need to kind of go inwards and meditate, 
allow yourself to do that. If your body is saying we need to rest, friggin' do it. That is a, just as productive as doing 50 lots of work in a day, okay? And then we have advancement and recognition. Then this is the last part of your journey towards your soulmate, recognizing what you love, who you are, and going towards this new path and meeting your soulmate, which is so cute. I love it, ah, so cute. Some of you guys are gonna get a ginger cat. I just got that really strongly, like a tabby cat. Okay, you're working on your heart chakra. Here we go, meditate, I love this. I will meditate and be peaceful and calm in my interactions with others in the world. That is exactly that energy, that hermit card. I love that, oh yes. Divine intervention, the seventh chakra of crown. I honor my higher power and know that anything is freaking possible, girl. Yes, yes, queen. I love this card. I love this beautiful image. That's beautiful. So it's kind of like being in the solitude between um, confusion, being silent within the confusion. And the king of pentacles is all about stability and patience, okay? And being stable within the ruckus, within the, within the scarcity. And the ace of wands is being powerful and doing things you're really passionate about. So how are they gonna meet their person? Sun in Leo, second house, that makes so much sense. Being in your sexual energy, being creative, through your work, through your career, through hobbies. And most likely if you express your creativity, you're actually gonna gain a lot more money because your root chakra will be more healed and your sacral chakra will be more healed. And your root chakra is to do with money, physical attainment, and what you can achieve, what you, what, what you are, sorry, not, what you, not what you can achieve, your abundance. Basically like physical elements. So that's what you are creating. The Leo is about expression, about being loud, about being noticed. That is what you're working through. And you're working through being authentic and because you have such a big heart, Leos have such big hearts. I feel like you're learning to open up your heart and not judge yourself on needing what your needs are. If you need to have physical touch, that is what you need and you're gonna get it. If you need uh, affirmations, if you need gifts of, uh, or acts of service, if you need gifts, if that's your love language, that is your love language. Never neglect that. If somebody hasn't, hasn't got that, but you do, Never underestimate your power and stand in your power, stay with that. And if you really do need that in a relationship, never settle for less, okay? That is basically what this is saying. Open your heart because it's definitely gonna be worth it. And most likely you'll meet your person on some sort of lunar or solar eclipse. There's definitely an eclipse of something, like two things coming together, the masculine and the feminine. I love this reading. Thank you so much for being here, guys. Um, if you wanna check out my private reading rates, all the information is down below along with my crystal shop. Thank you so much for being here. I love you guys. I appreciate you. You are amazing. You are gorgeous souls. Keep going. You are doing such an amazing job. Your soulmate is coming soon, girl. I'm seeing it around February time or in the next two months-ish, there could be somebody coming in who's gonna help you towards your soulmate, okay? Or your soulmate could appear. You never know. I'm also seeing the four of wands, so massive amounts of stability and uh, connecting with your body and your soul and yourself. So thank you so much for watching, guys. I will speak to you very soon. I hope you have a lovely day. Bye.